One of the most powerful features of Python is the availability of what we call modules. Modules are files that contain Python elements such as class definitions or function definitions or perhaps uh, special data items. But what a, what a module allows you to do is to package up that functionality and then use it in any number of other programs. And so, for example, we've been using this module called Turtle. Turtle is provided to us as part of the standard library in Python. And when we import the Turtle module, what that does is it gives us access to a number of things that have been defined as part of what we need to be able to do Turtle graphics and we can import that module into any program that we wish. We don't have to continually rewrite that functionality. We can simply use that functionality over and over again by creating this import. So one thing that we should talk about is the import statement itself. We've seen it a number of times, but what we need to know is that the import simply creates a name that refers to an object, much like a number of other things that occur in Python. So when we say import turtle, what's happening is we're creating a name called turtle, which is a reference to an object. But this object happens to be a module object. And inside that module object, there is a definition of a class called screen, and there is a definition of a class called capital T turtle. And so by importing the turtle module, the name turtle now refers to this collection and we can utilize these classes by simply saying in the turtle module I would like to access the screen class and perhaps call the constructor. So the dot operator is used to connect the module name with an item that is in the module. So we've been using this as we've been doing turtle programming and we can see here in this example that WN is now a reference to a screen object. That screen object was created by using the turtle constructor or the, the screen constructor that's part of the turtle module and Alex is a reference to a turtle object and again that constructor is part of the turtle class that is also in the turtle module. So it turns out that there are lots and lots of these modules available and some of them are part of the uh, standard Python library and of course other modules might exist out on the internet and we could download those and install them but one of the most important things to realize is that if you want to use modules you have to know what they contain. And so it's important to become a user of the so-called Python documentation. And the Python documentation website for Python version 3 has a number of things that you can read, but one of them that's important to us here is the Global Module Index. And if I click on that, I get an alphabetical listing of all the different modules that exist that we could import into our program. And let's just go down here and find the turtle module. So here it is, turtle, an educational framework for simple graphics applications. And if we click on that module, we will then get a very detailed description of what that module contains. And if we keep scrolling down, we will see that we have a description of methods that the turtle provides and we have a description of methods that the screen provides and so by reading this documentation we can find out all the details about what it is that we can get at once we import that turtle module. So being able to use modules and being interested enough to search the modules to see what's available provides us with a very powerful tool set that we can make use of as we write more and more complex programs.